Hi everyone, this is Ruloff and he surprised me today with a visit. He said, ring, ring, are you up? And I sort of said, yep, yeah, I'm here. And he came up to see me. Ruloff is a pastor down in Ipswich and uh, got to know him through Edgar and through the ministry that um, we both have had and shared in. But uh, yeah, how's ministry going? Um, well, I was going to say well, considering COVID, but it's it's well. It is what it's it is. Well, it's, it is. You get to you know you get to lean on God and help people, and you know God is there for you as much as you feel you are there for people. So that's the most wonderful thing of all of it. Yeah. Now, rule of uh, some of you actually at Living Grace um, may know him because he's been uh, up a few times and also involved in. Uh, Lift and Renewal with, with Edgar on a few occasions and I think there's some of those um, stories, there are lots of stories, man, we could be actually, we have already had two cups of coffee <laughs> and talking about all of this, so it could go on for half an hour, but to, to keep it short, a highlight for everybody watching today about when did God actually become up close and personal, you know, in terms of um, most of us have come and your, your background like mine has come from a very head based, um, you know, Dutch mm. reform. Uh, liturgy you go through the you know all of the stuff that you need to know and then that's basically it you've ticked the boxes but uh, somewhere along the line it gets a little bit more okay now God is for real it's not just something that's written I've experienced it what what's one of those moments in your life when God uh, knocked on your door and said hello <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good question and I'm, I'm like Dirk said we've probably had quite a bit of a chat about all this stuff together so I'll try try and summarize it probably not summarize all of it that would still take quite a while but you know I think something that stands out to me and I hope that this serves as an encouragement to you know all you guys out there as well is um, that well first and foremost I think God is wonderful obviously I wouldn't be serving in my capacity if I didn't think that he was real and wonderful which he is and um, a lot of you guys wouldn't be watching this if you didn't think that God was real and wonderful and you wanted to learn more and connect with, you know, your community and, and, and your, your community leaders here. Uh, something that probably I want to encourage people with and encourage um, leaders in the church and, and the church in general with is, is that God works in weird and wonderful ways. Weird and wonderful. And it's, it's yeah. I think, in those weird and wonderful <laughs> ways that you really experience something special. Um, you know, and I think God is wonderfully ordinary through the Bible and so a lot of the time when you read the Bible things jump out at you and it's just those amazing encounters that they mean something special but then he does other things that is just so out of the ordinary that you just kind of go wow and I think one of, one of those times for me and and this is what I hope serves as encouragement is God often I think connects with us in a personal way but in an unexpected kind of way having grown up in a the Dutch reformed context which was which is very traditional and, and I'm thankful for that tradition it got me where I am and um, you know growing up in a very stoic Dutch kind of family sort of thing was you know great parents very you know filled with faith and and wonderful in, in teaching us the faith and carrying it on but in, in that traditional kind of way and then you know, going through seminary and all of that sort of thing it's it's always been interesting and so you know I've very much grown up to be the, to the South African Dutch traditional don't cry kind of guy and uh, so I think one of the times that God really surprised me was when I, I was privileged enough to be a part of a prayer group and um, you know you, you do the typical prayer thing where you get together and you know people have their bits and, and you kind of pray about it and and th this was a bit different in the sense that you know people were asking kind of Jesus to lead them in the prayer and you know you know if you see feel anything then then you talk about that and, and you kind of in a revelatory prayer kind of pray space if you like and I, I just remember I was like you know some people would be like you know I really sense or I really see or something and I'm like nothing just nothing and I was like okay well this is interesting I guess and um, and then the weirdest thing happened because for someone who's not a very emotional guy I just remember at various parts during prayer my emotions just going all over the shop like exceptionally anxious even though I felt fine I think mm -hmm. and exceptionally emotionally uh, like almost crying just so emotional about things and I'm not that kind of an emotional person and so um, you know it is very clear that in certain parts of the prayer that was going on and we're asking Jesus 
to guide us in the Holy Spirit to show us things that you know my, my emotions was really actually confirming or, or affirming certain things that other people were feeling or sensing during the prayer so for this guy who don't see hear nothing at that point in time to 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 be like overly emotional you know it's, I just thought it was wonderfully ironic that God would take this, this tough rugby guy who who don't display emotions all that much and for the emotions to almost be the you know the main focus almost of that area I think that's just know, fantastic. Um, Rulof, one of the things about uh, I think uh, that surprises me about the weird and wonderful thing about God is that it actually looks at all of us you know we mm. have um, put it into just the intellectual part of our head knowledge kind of stuff but sometimes he sort of says no 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 I want to connect with the heart and suddenly it is a lot more emotional and you're the empathy, if you like, I mean, uh, there were many a times when Jesus was talking about, and he had compassion on the people, you know, there's, mm. there's a heart kind of a connection, and he's obviously touched that part in your life, and so I said, you know, let's get that going, because you know, you've got enough in the head, but, you know, let's get that heart fired up, mm. and since then, um, you've had more experiences on top of that, too, it's like, you know, words of knowledge, and sometimes seeing, you know, colors and, and uh, certain things about people. And uh, there are people actually even in Living Grace who have actually been part of that development. Hi, Helen. I heard about your story. And the thing is that, you know, it's, it's great, actually, that um, God doesn't just give you one thing. It's almost like he starts with something. Sometimes it's a weird and wonderful yeah. to say, are you OK with me giving you a bit more? Because when the weird and wonderful stuff happens, it so often takes us out of our comfort zone. If it would have just sort of said, oh, I'll give you another bit of knowledge in your head, it would have been, oh, okay, forgotten. But that's a story that really meant something to you, that your prayer language started to have emotion to it. Wow, mm. that's cool. Yeah. It wasn't, I think, very much, the, you know, one of the things that it really reminded me of is one that, that what the shortest verse in the Bible. It's like Jesus just Jesus encountered wept. something yeah. like wept, like yeah. a yeah. God who yeah. weeps, yeah. you know, like overwhelmed with emotion. Yeah. In, yeah. in certain senses but also the other thing I think it's weird that people um, you know almost want to disconnect emotion and, and, and look I'll be the first to put my hand up maybe that was you know a big part of my um, upbringing as such not because of anyone in particular it's just the way it was um, disconnect emotion with you know uh, your faith relationship in that sense and it's like so many times through the Bible like we get equated to the church and Jesus it's a marriage yeah. and I'm like no one would agree that not being emotional with a person you're married with is a good idea. You know, it's like, so why why is it that we get into this, I guess, frame of mind where we think that, you know, emotion is a bad thing. Yeah. Being overwhelmed by Jesus is a bad thing. That the Holy Spirit kind of take over is a bad thing. It's like, man, I'm like, the best part of marriage sometimes is getting overwhelmed with certain emotions. And often they're the memorable ones, they're the significant parts of marriage, they're the parts we connect most, and that relationship is the closest. So why why oh. wouldn't it be with our faith? Oh, awesome, Rulof. I think that that that's a word of blessing for everyone tuning in today. Is that you know um that picture of of marriage, the bridegroom, the bride, and and all of those pictures that we have in the Bible that actually makes uh makes it clear that God wants an intimate relationship with us, that you can't take the heart and shove it to the side and just make it an intellectual thing you've got to put the heart right into it it's the center part where God wants to be on the throne and says yep I'm going to um, going to not just talk about love you're going to experience it absolutely yeah. oh man <laughs> well thanks for chatting with me today that was awesome oh it's wonderful to have this opportunity thank you for having me and it is wonderful to be able to well not see you yet but you know you guys seeing me and hopefully we see you guys soon all right bye